Perlina is basically an algae consumed when dried that is considered to be one of the world's most popular food supplement with an extremely high protein content. And yet again, Kiriko Secondary School is on the map for being the first school in Kenya to adopt cultivation of spirulina. Spirulina is now an essential element of the meals at early childhood development centers. Being exceptionally rich in protein up to 70% by weight, nearly three times as much as meat and fish. Now I know you're curious. Let's make our way to Nakuru County and explore this special superfood. Thank you, Kehil. Okay. So I go meet her. Thank you. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting, exciting episode of Kilimo na Biashara. I'm sure by now you're wondering what is Linda doing in a secondary school? Well, yes. We are at Keriko Secondary School in Nakuru, Lari Division. And the reason as to why we are here today is that this is one of the schools that is practicing cultivation of spirulina. Have you ever heard about spirulina? Well, <laughs> me neither. That's why we are here to learn all together, right? And also, this is the school that hosts the best teacher in the world, the award-winning Peter Tabichi. How about that? <laughs> I'm super excited about that. But that's besides the point. Shall we learn about spirulina? Okay, then let's go meet um, the, the science teacher or the agriculture club teacher to teach us more about spirulina, shall we? Let's go. <laughs> Hello, teacher. Hi, Linda. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Not not bad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So this is Keriko Secondary School. This is Keriko Secondary, the famous Keriko Secondary School. The famous Keriko Secondary School. Correct. Tell me more about this because I've heard this is one of the schools that is practicing spirulina farming. Sure it is. And how did the idea conceptualize? Because spirulina is quite unique. People haven't even heard about it. This is an idea that was sold to us by our good friends, engineer without borders, Israel together with the Israel Embassy sometime back in uh, November last year and uh, we have walked uh, through this journey together and now we started in a small way but now we can talk of uh, mass production as time goes by. And how has it been since you started the project? How is the uptake? Uh, two of our teachers were taken uh, for training by the engineers without borders uh, Israel and after two or three weeks, they were able to learn a lot and uh, they came back and uh, established the whole uh, uh, project in our school. And have you seen the community and even the students now adopting this? Actually, we've seen a lot, uh, including the community surrounding the school. They are really embracing the idea. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, we had uh, the governor visiting our school together with the Israel Basenda, mm -hmm. our area MP, mm -hmm and they are representative from uh, the office of the First Lady. Mm -hmm. So we've seen uh, a lot uh, through this preliminary. That is quite interesting and now I want to see the real, uh, the real spirulina, how it's cultivated, what's the situation, how does it look? <laughs> so shall we go see it? Richard? I'll take you to two of our teachers that were trained uh -huh. to learn more about spirulina. Okay, let's go. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And you can, uh, that you can see from um, our slides here, the definition about spirulina. Uh, spirulina is a... Um... So, welcome, mm -hmm. Linda. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Olotina. One minute, please. We're going to interrupt your uh, class briefly. We have uh, some visitors with us here, and they're interested to learn more about uh, spirulina. So, Linda, welcome. Mm -hmm. is Mr. Olotina. Hi, teacher Olotina. Hi, Linda. <laughs> hi, Linda. Hi, class. <laughs> So he's taking over from here? Correct. Ah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Then I can join and listen in to what he's teaching about spirulina. Please do. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you are welcome. So uh, we were looking at the definition of a spirulina, and uh, as you can see from the uh, clips here, uh, spirulina is a, it belongs in a family of uh, the algae plant, the cyanobacteria plant, which is grown simply in a culture of uh, fertilizers mixed according to proper proportions, as you can see from our demo there. Spirulina contains all the nutrients that you require as a human being. You talk of uh, proteins, carbohydrates, uh, vitamins. So when you eat spirulina, you get all the nutrients that you need. Okay, you came in at a time when we were done, so we want now to proceed to the greenhouse mm -hmm. for the practicals. Oh, that's actually my favorite part. Let's go. Wow, so <laughs> let's move. Okay. Greenhouse too. Ah. Yes. So Let's when you come, see. you open. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Linda. Ah. Uh, this is the first greenhouse too. Yes. Greenhouse one, that is. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you put on your gloves because Ooh. you are handling food. Oh, yeah, yes. I have to. Now I'm ready. Wow. Now for someone who's wondering, what is really spirulina? Because there's a farmer who's interested at this point, but what is really spirulina? I wish to say uh, spirulina is actually a superfood. It is microscopic. It is a biomass of um, a cyanobacteria. And now food for who? <laughs> food for human beings and also animals. Yeah, it is microscopic. It has got very thin filaments yeah. that float in water. Ah, I've noticed they can see the green uh, matter, but you cannot see it as vegetative as perhaps as well. Yeah, spirulina is uh, actually microscopic, uh -huh. but it's green in color. It has chlorophyll just like other plants, and it manufactures food uh -huh. in presence of light, as you can see. Uh -huh. But it's not grown in water. It is grown in a medium in which you've added fertilizers in some certain proportions. Tell me about the process, especially now that it involves fertilizer and a lot of components. What's the process? Okay, Spirulina needs uh, six kinds of fertilizers. Mm. First, we have the, the sodium bicarbonate. Mm -hmm. We have the monopotassium phosphate. Mm -hmm. We have the potassium nitrate. Uh, we have the magnesium mm. um, uh, sulfate, mm. uh, heptahydrate. Um, then um, we have uh, the, the fifth one, the sodium chloride. Yes. They're supposed to be six. Mm -hmm. And then for the sodium bicarbonate, mm -hmm. you do 10 grams in one liter. Mm -hmm. For potassium nitrate, you do two grams in one liter. Mm -hmm. Sodium chloride, you do one gram yes. in one liter. Mm -hmm. And then for the remaining three, monopotassium phosphate, mm -hmm. you do 0 0.1. Mm -hmm. uh, Gram. Yes. How do you maintain? Because now with 8,000 liters, that's quite massive for you as a school. We recruited a club of about 60 students and then we trained them. We passed the knowledge to them. And then they have been the ones who have been assisting uh, to monitor spirulina. Because I want to say, actually, a challenge in a, a, a growing spirulina is you really have to be there for the spirulina. So we take the depth. You should, uh, the, the depth should not exceed 20 centimeters. Uh, deep and then we also measure the pH it's supposed to be alkaline it should operate from a pH of about 9 to 10 optimally uh, 10 point um, 8 and then you also have to do the temperatures when the temperatures drop or they are too high you need to regulate because if it is beyond that 8 you are going to denature the plant is going to die so those are the important maintenance of uh, the spirulina the one which is a desktop the one which is very important to do here is agitation or stirring. Ah, no wonder there was this stirring thing right here. Stirring is the most critical a maintenance, mm -hmm. a procedure that you must always do. And uh, you should have uh, a place you can see our book, we clog. Mm -hmm. We prepare a schedule that so and so, you'd be in the greenhouse at this point, and then you stir. So you just stir it like any other thing. Come on, girl. Okay, yeah, you, you, you start normally the way you start porridge, mm -hmm. but you're supposed to be very gentle. So you start at one point and then you swirl in one direction. If it's clockwise, maintain clockwise gently. You start as if 
uh, you have the old time in this world to start because you've already said the filaments of spirulina are very delicate and when you break it into small pieces you will not be able to trap it in the net during harvesting they will be very small so they'll pass through the net sounds like a really proud plant yeah they're actually very delicate but now teacher someone would ask what are some of the importance of spirulina what is it used for basically it contains like all that you need in a balanced diet proteins very high percentage carbohydrates vitamins and um, so spirulina comes in very handy especially now when you see the kind of environments you are in uh, uh, we don't eat balanced diet so if you have kideri and you've crushed your spirulina you just add five grams in the morning if it is a uh, kideri uh, if it is a um, if rice, chapati, uh, mandazi, any kind of food, you add 5 grams and then at lunchtime you add 5 grams, then in the evening 5 grams. So those kids who are suffering in let's say Kwashiako, Marasmus, Amawako na Utapiamulo, uh, it comes in handy because it's going to supplement, especially for young kids who are growing and they need new trends for body growth. And then also those who are aged. Those who are aged, you know, they need a lot of supplements. Mm -hmm. Spirulina comes in handy. And also, uh, spirulina, according to research, uh, is also an alternative medicine. Like uh, those who are suffering the issues to do with um, uh, diabetes, pressure, and some lifestyle, disease, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Spirulina comes in handy. And uh, uh, that's why spirulina now is becoming an alternative uh, in our times. We are focusing on spirulina cultivation and I was just curious to know, uh, teacher, what's the difference between the four poems? Is there a difference? Is there something similar? We use that language uh, because this can be a pool or you can call it a pond if you've done it on a, a cemented floor yes. and then you do the ponds. You can make these ones are just artificial wire mesh and then you put some canvas, some uh, uh, this material that is waterproof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you do your culture of a spirulina. So in these schools, there are different techniques that we are using. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we installed the pumps. That one is an air pump, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no power pump. Mm -hmm. You can see it is swelling water. Uh, so that it automatically swallows water. Agitates. Yeah. It automatically. Uh, that swelling, making water to go around, is agitation yes. in it. Uh, and then this one is an air pump. Yes. This one is an air pump. Uh -huh. Uh, you can see it's making the water to bubble up, mm -hmm. uh, so bringing about agitation. Ah, yeah. So those are the main uh, differences. Yeah, techniques to assist uh, yes. those attending in the greenhouse from mm -hmm. stirring from time to time. Those are very technical methods, yeah? But now I wonder what are the challenges involved when it comes to this type of cultivation? Yes, uh, there are challenges when you're managing uh, spirulina. Like we already said, it's a proud plant. Yes. It needs your attention. Like, uh, uh, I want to say in quotes, <laughs> that patient in an ICU, okay? Yes, so yes. you have to be there yeah. and ensure you uh, uh, um, uh, ensure that the spirulina is doing fine yes. and it is well. Yeah, so you have to agitate um, every one hour yeah, as, as, for as long as there is light. Uh, then you have to measure the temperature, the pH, the depths, all that you have to attend to it and ensure there are no insects falling in, that's why it's being grown in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. There should be no dust, it should be very clean because this is ready food. So it can only be grown indoors and not outdoors? It cannot be grown outside because of the harsh environment outside there. The insects, the, 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 the dust launches into the filaments and then they collapse. Mm -hmm. And then it also dictifies the food, contaminated the food. Mm -hmm. So that's why it has to be grown in a greenhouse mm -hmm. where there is um, uh, proper hygiene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
course, right from harvesting, it's ready for consumption. I see harvesting is ongoing. Now, perhaps you can tell me a little bit about it. Uh, since it's microscopic, this is a special net. Mm -hmm. It has got very small openings, which can be able to trap spirulina and then allow the filtrate. You can see, actually, what is coming out there is colorless. Ah. It's colorless. But what is going in is green. Mm -hmm. So after you have harvested, you see what they are doing? Yeah. They are just facilitating to filtrate so that the process can be a little bit faster. These nets are special. Yeah. They have got very small pores. Mm -hmm. So they trap the spirulina as a green paste. Yeah. And then before you take it to the drying pan, mm. you put in distilled water yes. on a separate uh -huh. container so that you rinse. Uh -huh. You rinse just like you have done carrots from the farm. Yes. You have to wash off the mud. Yeah. So we rinse it and then we smear it on a, a drying pan like we've uh, uh, shown there yeah. into very thin covering so that it can dry very fast. Uh -huh. So it uh, dries into uh, those particular flakes mm -hmm. and then you can put them in airtight containers for storage. You can store them for about two years. Mm -hmm. If you have a fridge, you can store oh. them for two years. And, and how long does it take to dry up? Uh, Barely one hour, to, like you see it's very hot here, yeah. so the moment you uh, spread a very thin paste, mm -hmm. it dries within two hours. Ah. Yeah, it's good to go. It looks like an easy process, yeah? Just two hours. Yes, yes. This is a really special project, yeah? And I would like to know your thoughts about this project, your projections in the next five years, where do you see this? Wow, for me, I look forward for this thing spreading throughout to other schools and in the country because we are already doing it and um, yeah, we are going to expand our greenhouse and increase the pools uh, because of the benefits of uh, spirulina, especially if we get um, licensed mm -hmm. for public consumption. Yes. Yeah, but we are already consuming because it's already it's ready food. Mm -hmm. So I would love to harvest. We definitely can't live here without knowing how to harvest spirulina. So would you show me? Mm -hmm. uh, this is our harvesting device, and uh, uh, Linda, I have a surprise guest uh, for you. Ah, uh, brother Tabichi. to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm, I'm truly honored. Like, whoa, Kilimo and Abishara fans will be super, super happy. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's my pressure. Yes. And I can, uh, if you won't mind, yes. I can show you how to harvest. Oh, yeah, I know. Spirulina. Uh -huh. So, yeah, we have the sieve. And then you get some yes. spirulina. Yeah. Just put it into this. Yes. You know, I've even so that we don't also uh, mm -hmm. get maybe in case there are other components that yeah. we don't want to have a so yeah. they'll all remain here as residues. It's truly an honor to have you with us today and on a scientific level, kilimo level, mathematical level. But I would love to know your thoughts about uh, this project even as we are harvesting. First of all, it addresses the issue of food insecurity. Yes. This is... Uh, uh, lare, which is dry in, in most of the uh, times, like after every five years, you normally, uh, uh, you know, exp people here experience the dry spell. So, which means during that time, there is the issue of food insecurity. So, how do you address that? So, unless there is such a creativity, then it means people will not be able to get food to eat yeah. and so I'm very sure this has the potential of addressing that issue of food insecurity mm -hmm. because it has uh, nutrients mm -hmm. very nutritious yeah. so you act, it's, it's a kind of food supplement which can be added to the other yeah. foodstuffs and therefore that's going to enhance mm -hmm. you know the health of the people yeah. at the same time apart from addressing the food insecurity mm -hmm. it's also a project for learning you know, we have STEM, that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So this is going to enhance STEM learning classroom because students will be coming here and then teachers will find it easy to facilitate the, the, you know, the teaching and learning process and students will be able to see practically what they're learning in class, not just, you know, learning the theory part, but also they also want to see the, yeah. the practical part. It's really good uh, to engage you in this level, but also I can't run away from congratulating you for being the best teacher in the world. Like, it's, it's, it's really amazing. But now also, these projects that are happening in this school now, most of them are because of you uh, being here. Tell me your thoughts about this and how are your feelings in regards to this? You must be so happy. <laughs> uh, it's a great honor and privilege. Um, 
I really want to thank God. I want to thank the community, the school, the students, the staff, and you know, everyone. So I don't want to just say that it's just about me, but through this, we have had many people coming. We have so many opportunities for students even getting a sponsorship, scholarship opportunities, and other projects, you know, like this is one of them. You know, it attracted those, you know, organizations and the other stakeholders to come and partner with us. So it has created that, you know, opportunity for partnership and cooperation and enhanced learning, not only in classroom, you know, but even outside classroom, which is also in line, very coherent with the the, the new system that we are, of education that we are trying to embrace, which is the, the CPC, mm. competence-based, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kind and, of education. And, and thank you so much for, for, for your thoughts, for sharing your thoughts in regards to this project and also making time for us. Hey, at this level, let's go take some water or uji or something that has a little bit of spirulina, right? <laughs> let's go, we are sweating. <laughs> Yes, I can say it's wonderful to be in the Spirulina Club first, <laughs> since it's something unique, you have never seen, something original. And another thing that just makes it better is the fact that you can research more about it, the fact that you can, you have open, it's open to research, since you have done some research, you have created some solutions, you have tried to change the mediums using other signings. So I think it broadens your brain, it broadens your understanding on science, on genetics, on agriculture, it brings agriculture to the scientific world at most. Yeah, I can pursue agriculture in future because you see, uh, when we talk about spirulina, we are dealing with advanced agriculture. We are dealing with technological agriculture and uh, I believe it will be very possible with the exposure provided in Spirulina Club. The Spirulina Club, we had a chance to present it, to present to our Excellency, her governor, Susan Keheka. She really enjoyed it to explain to her about the benefits and how Spirulina is. And she, we were awarded a scholarship through Spirulina, which I can say is fantastic. What have you prepared for us here? Uh, we decided that before you leave, mm -hmm. you must have a taste of the superfood. Okay. So this is the final product uh -huh. of uh, spirulina. We've prepared a cup of porridge here. Yes. Uh, you're just going to add uh, into it, and then you stir, and then to be ready to be drunk. So how much should I add? Just a small bit. Let me add yeah, that. That one is okay. Just a little bit like A little this. bit like that, yes. The talk of uh, eight grams, uh -huh. that's okay can also add this one on mine. Mm. It's really nice. I thought I'd feel a different taste, but it's just normal porridge. Actually, you can't feel anything. Yeah, you can't feel it's anything. It's just the coloration you're going to see. And cheers to you as well. You're doing an amazing job. Yeah. Cheers, Tabichi. And cheers to you, Benjamin. Cheers. Thank you so much. And thank you also for staying with us throughout this time and learning more about spirulina farming because with four grams or five grams you can get lots of protein lots of vitamins lots of carbohydrates um benjamin here has called it a superfood and this will be the next uh, solution for food insecurity in the country and i'm so happy that today also we got to engage with the best teacher in the world but that's besides the point i'm excited about it so thank you so much and i hope also you inspired in some way and you can also try this type of farming in your own home so thank you so much my name is linda koskei see you again next week sometime see you god bless